So, um, welcome, Paul. Hello. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for talking to me. It's a um, pleasure. What I'd love to know is if you could share... So, you're the founder of Parkrun. That's right. And I'd love if you could share that story with us about how did this all come into being? Okay, well, to be, to be quite honest, I, I was a, a normal person working for a, in a normal uh, life, earning a crust just like everybody else. Um, but I suppose I went through a small midlife crisis when I, I was in my 40s. and um, Well, actually, I was in my 30s, but it took about 10 years to get through that. And I was doing absolutely fine, but I realized there was something missing in my life. And so somewhere in the, when I was in my 40s, I decided I would do two things. The one was to go back to running, which I had dropped from 12 years before. And the second one was to start paragliding. Oh, wow. So I worked uh, pretty hard. I got my paragliding license, but I also joined a local running club called Stragglers. And it was a, a lot of fun. I, I didn't anticipate that I would be um, competitive. I just thought I was joining a dating club, basically. Go, to, go and do something that you like, that other people like, and you meet a lot of people that you know, and, and, and you just, you know, it would be the right thing to do. But I started to become quite competitive. And I think I was 43 when I ran my, uh, I, I ran another marathon. And... I ran the Kingston Marathon, I came third, and I think I ran it in 2.41 or 2.42. Wow. And, uh, but, I mean, that's after 12 years of not running. Yeah. And, and so I think I realized that I was competitive, and I decided, okay, I would, I would try and achieve uh, a lifetime goal that I've had, which was to try and run the marathon in under two and a half hours. And uh, I started to train pretty well, pretty hard. And... I think somewhere in 2000 and late 2003 or middle of 2004, I ended up injuring myself pretty badly, um, just overdoing everything. And as a result, I uh, was told that I probably couldn't run for a year or more and um, I need to just give myself some rest. And I thought the best thing to do was to try and stay involved with running uh, to try and do something that probably hadn't been done before and offer the local running community um, you know, an activity that I, I had experienced before but that didn't exist here in the UK. And so I started what was then called the UK time trial and there was only ever going to be one. It wasn't supposed to be a park run. It was, the key was that uh, no matter what your state of mind on a Saturday morning no matter what you had done on the Friday night, you wouldn't have to think twice about whether or not the park run existed. It would always be there at 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning, and it would always be there regardless of whether um, you had signed up or not, or it was free to, to enter. It was, there were no barriers to, to arriving and taking part. And the, you know, the very first park run, we, which was October the 4th, 2004, um, we had 13 runners. And nobody told me they were coming. I announced that I was doing this. And uh, the fact that there were 13 runners, well, that was just lucky. I happened to know them all, which was a good thing too. But at the end, we, we started them off and we said, well, here's the course. We didn't tell them a lot. There were no marshals. There was no route markers or anything. We said, it's up to you to make your way around. Uh, when you get to the finish, you write your name down and we'll write down your position and then we'll do the rest for you. We'll produce a result. And, and was that's this at Bushy Park? Was this was Bushy Park in yeah. Kevin. And that's pretty much how it worked. And, you know, because it was organic... Um, yeah, so, so it was always supposed to be the, a very, very simple thing. People would just arrive, they would give us their names, they would run. Uh, at the end of the run, we would record their position and their time. And my, my goal was always to, to publish the result. But, you know, web technology was quite new in that stage. I didn't have a clue about it. My thought was to try and publish it in the newspaper. And so every week, without fail... I would write a report 
and I would send it to the newspaper, the local newspaper, with a picture, and I would say, here are the people who finished in this particular event. And for months, they ignored me. For six months yeah. at least, they ignored me. And then I think possibly somebody came down and did a fairly good time, and I sent a good picture, and then they filled in some loose column space, and thereafter, they just got lazy. They started to get these reports every single week, and as a result, Bushy Park Run started to grow. And it wasn't until, I suppose, a year later, when we were having our first anniversary, that there were about 70 people who, who took part. Um, I used to sit in a pub um, in Teddington with two other friends, a chap called Duncan Gaskell and another one called Jim Desmond. And every uh, once a month we'd meet, we would talk about Park Run. And, you know, I just thought we were delivering a single event. It would never get any bigger. But the feedback from people was that this is exactly what they wanted. They wanted the low-key element. They wanted it so uh, something that... Uh, wasn't threatening, they didn't have to put a number on, um, and it included children, and if you wanted to run with a dog, you could as well. So it was very, very low-key. And, and so Jim, uh, Duncan and I used to talk about this for years, really. And in the first two years, all the questions that we asked, such as, are we going to make money from this? Are we going to charge people? Uh, wh what permissions do we need? What do we need in order to get those permissions? What role are we going to play in the, the bigger society of sport and so on? All of those things were answered in those first two years, and our principles were born. It was in the middle of the second year that Jim Desmond said to me, Paul, this is great, this is wonderful, you need to do it again somewhere else, just to see if we can create this cookie-cutter approach to parkrun. And, uh, and so we decided to do that. And it meant quite a lot of changes in terms of how we delivered the events because at the end of two years at Bushy Park, the way it worked was I anticipated who might be there because I had this long list of everybody who'd ever done it. And I would print out all the names, first name, uh, surname, first name, separated by gender, and we would print these out four columns to a page um, front and back and at that stage I was printing out 80 sheets of paper every week so we started to run into problems so we had to work out how to do that and so uh, the whole technology aspect of Park Run developed from that point on but I went over to Wimbledon with Jim I left Bushy in the hands of Duncan which is the first time we conceptualized um, a team a volunteer team running the event that you could then move on. You know, people would leave and there'd be other people coming on and so on. So a, a normal sort of working environment, but with volunteers. And, uh, and then we went off to Wimbledon. And I set myself a goal that within 12 weeks of starting Wimbledon, I would have a local team to take over from me. And the, the fantastic thing was that within six weeks, a chap called Ian Higgins... Um, and a number of other individuals, Carol McCormack and so on, stepped forward and said they would be the team. And so that really the Park Run in a Box, or Park Run as you know it now, was born in 2007 in the, the first week of, of that year in January. Mm. And uh, well, we've never looked back really.